When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds. Bismillah rahim Welcome to Let's Talk. I'm your moderator, Omar Dunlap, welcoming you with a Muslim greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum. And I would like to welcome, of course, our host, Idris Tawfiq. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. And our studio audience, Assalamu alaikum. And I would like to now turn to Brother Idris for his opening reflections. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wassalatu wassalam ala ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In the name of Allah, most gracious, most compassionate All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds Peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger Muhammad And may the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah Be upon all of you who are watching this program today now this episode of Let's Talk is about calling others to Islam. This is something very close to the heart of every Muslim because all Muslims want to tell people about Islam because we love Islam very much. So a little thought about that as we begin the show. You know, I travel, I travel all over the world a lot uh, talking about Islam and I sit for many hours on aeroplanes. I'm on many, many aeroplanes. And, and of late I've been thinking, you know, there are no atheists on an aeroplane. You know, if you were to imagine that the, the, the engine were to cut out and the plane starts plummeting towards the ground, there are no atheists on that plane. There are no people who don't believe in God on the plane. The first thing they would think of would be to call on, please save us, help us. There are no atheists on a plane plunging to the ground. Just as, you know, in recent weeks and months we've seen in Haiti and in Chile those terrible scenes of, of earthquake and, and men scrabbling in the ground looking for their loved ones. And you know, even the man who's never prayed, there were no atheists scrabbling in the ground looking for their children. A man looking for his boy underneath a fallen building would be crying out, God, if you are there, take my eyes but save my boy. So there are no atheists at all, really. When, as we say in English, when push comes to shove, when the chips are really down, people turn to God. You know, we hear that our little girl is, is sick with cancer, and we pray, please, God, save our little girl. Take us, but save our daughter. Now, the message of Islam is very simple. The message of Islam can be summed up in two phrases. Islam teaches that there is a God, and Islam teaches that that God speaks to his creation. This is the essence of our, of our declaration of, of belief. We say, Ashahadu Allah ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no created being worthy of worship but Allah alone. So there is a God. And we also say, Wa ashahadu ala Muhammad Rasulallah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. In other words, this God is not just totally remote from his creation, but this God speaks to men and women. And so this message of, of Islam speaks to the hearts of all people. You know, as Muslims, we believe that Islam has existed since the beginning of time. There is no founder of Islam. Muhammad, peace, blessings, of mercy of Allah be upon him, is not the founder of Islam. We believe that Islam has existed right from the beginning of time. And that Islam is the natural religion of mankind. That all people born into this world have a natural inclination towards God. Towards that one God. And it's only the action of their parents that makes them Christian or Buddhist or whatever other religion. So Islam is for all people. That message of Islam is for all people. And you know, as Muslims, we make Islam very complicated. 
we, we, we talk about very complicated things, when really Islam is so simple that it speaks to the hearts of all. That message that there is a God, that speaks to all people. All people know that. When, when they lose their job, people will pray. You know, when they get sick, they'll pray. When, when times are hard, they will pray. Just naturally, people turn to a being greater than they are to ask for his help in times of trouble. And, and you know, as Muslims, sometimes we're, we're missing what's most important for ordinary people. Be, we, when we're telling them complicated things, we're, we're missing out on what can touch their hearts. What can touch their hearts is that there is a God. All people believe there's a God. Whether they admit it or not, they do. They believe there is one. And, you know, in Islam, we believe something very important about that God, Allah. We believe that Allah is... Certainly, he's so remote from his creation that there's no way we can describe him. In fact, as Muslims, we're sure that if we come up with a definition of what God is like, well, the only thing we can be sure of is that he's not like that. We can't comprehend this God. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. But also, also we believe something else about Allah, about this one God. We believe that he knows every leaf that falls from every tree. He's more close to us than our jugular vein. He knows everything about us, more than we know about ourselves. So this God speaks to his creation. And, and throughout history, this one God, Allah, has spoken the same message throughout his creation. You know, sometimes we think, we think about different messages. We think about the message of Christianity or the message of, of Judaism or the message of Islam. Well, surely common sense tells us that this God wouldn't send different messages to his creation. Why would he want to do that? To trick them, to fool them, to confuse them? No, surely the message has been the same all throughout history. But men and women have, have complicated things and, and distorted things and the prophets Peace be upon them all, they've been called since the beginning of time to share this message of the oneness of Allah and how we should serve him. So this is what we're trying to do in calling people to Islam. We're calling them to something that their heart longs for, this belief in one God and that he speaks to his creation. But that isn't my thought for today. That, that's sort of the introduction to the, to the show, calling others to Islam, to that simple message of Islam. My thought really, though, is very simple. You know, all Muslims want to tell people about Islam. I want to do dawah, they say to me. Brother Idris, I want to do dawah. What can I do? How can I tell people in the West about Islam? Because we love Islam so much, we want to tell people. But, you know, I started by saying I travel on planes a lot. Travel on aeroplanes. Well, when you're sitting waiting for the plane to take off, the air hostess or the steward stands in the aisle and gives you the safety instructions. They teach you how to put on your, your seat belt and they say that your, the, the shutters must be up and you know you, you, your seat must be upright and they, they give, and they tell you where the exits are on the plane. They explain everything and they say, even if you're a seasoned traveler, we need to tell you this. And there's something else they say. They say that if there's some turbulence and, and, and the plane gets into trouble, oxygen masks will automatically drop from above your head. And what they tell you about those oxygen masks is very important. They say, make sure you fit your own mask first before trying to help anyone else. This is my thought for today's show. Make sure you fit your own mask first before trying to help anyone else. You know, we all want to tell others about Islam. We all want to involve ourselves in the work of dawah, of spreading Islam throughout the world. But you know, we can't help other people unless we've fitted our own oxygen mask first, unless we've sorted ourselves out first. You know, if we're not praying five times a day, and let's be honest, not all of us are, if we're not reciting the Holy Quran, if we're not reading about our, our beautiful deen, our beautiful religion, if we're not feeding our own spirit with Islam, 
Well, we become just like gongs and, and, and drums banging, talking about nothing. In fact, talking about ourselves. So I would encourage you, as we begin to talk in this show about telling other people about Islam, I'd encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, to fit your own oxygen mask first. You know, you can tell other people about Islam, sure you can. But inshallah, you'll, you'll concentrate on, on your own life first. We don't point fingers in Islam at other people. We don't judge other people. Because, you know, our own lives are looking for, for mercy every day we live. So I would encourage you, maybe if you've not given it a thought before, fit your own oxygen mask first. Think about your own Islam. Where do I stand? Ask yourself, you know, am I a good Muslim? And when we can answer that question, inshallah, we can tell other people about Islam. Well, uh, Jazakallah khair, uh, Brother Idris. We're going to go to a quick break and we'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Let's Talk. Exploitation, hatred, all diseases of the heart. For the cure, join Huda TV every Sunday at 20 GMT for Moments for the Heart. Bismillah. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm your moderator, Omar Dunlap, and today we're discussing calling others to Islam. We actually asked a group of indo individuals a question, uh, wh what do we need to tell others about Islam and why? And we're going to take a look at their answers, inshallah. Indeed, there are many ways uh, to call uh, people to Islam. So what do you think about being uh, a role model uh, as an effective way for da'wah? Uh, I think the way, the best way that uh, we can decide it is the best way, it depends on the people who receive da'wah from the one who makes da'wah. So if uh, some people may refu refuse the, be the, 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 the most simple way, which is to, to give direct preach to them, especially people who uh, would feel very offended from uh, the one who gives them uh, direct, uh, direct speech or di direct preach. Of course, being a role model is the most effective way in uh, making da'wah. It's, it's how to put these words, uh, the teaching of the of the Prophet uh, وسلم, and the uh, and the Quran, in practice, it shows people how to practice those teaching. Can you give us uh, more details on uh, uh, what do you think about uh, direct preaching? Direct preaching is uh, is the, the simplest way, I think. But not all the people, not all the people would. Uh, would accept it. We cannot uh, dismiss the, the direct breach. The direct breach is, is basic and necessary and we can't ignore it. We can't say it's not important. Direct breach is very important. Uh, it was and it is and it will be forever. But if we said, if we, we are talking about the, the most effective way, of course the most effective way would be the, the, being the, the role model. Well, uh, that was very interesting, uh, Brother Idris. I think our studio audience might have some questions for us. So uh, who has a question or a comment? Yeah, I actually have a question okay. uh, to Dr. Idris. Uh, uh, with the vicious, uh, I mean the unfair campaign against Islam in the West, especially the Danish movies and the, uh, I mean the Danish caricature and uh, 
Dutch movies, and uh, this this very deformed image of Islam. So uh, uh, I'm sure I'm sure that there's a lot of people in the West who don't know what Islam is, is about or what Muslims do in uh, in their uh, home countries. So um, I think that there's a lot of people in, in the West that if you, if you ask them what Islam is about, they would uh, or what what Muslims do, they would answer that Muslims are people worshiping. Um, the black box in the desert and kiss the ground five times a day, which is, of course, ridiculous. So um, let, let, me, let me quote Dr. Idris here. W once one, a Muslim, uh, fits their own oxygen mask, what can they do next? I mean, in what way can we present Islam the right way to these people? How can we correct the image of Islam in the West? Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Well, of course, what you've done, brother, is you, you, you've, uh, you've handed it straight over to me. I, w I wanted something from you all first. But we can, we can give a few thoughts, maybe. Um, you know, I, I said at the start, I travel all over the world talking about Islam. And I'm invited by, mostly by Muslim communities. And the main thing they want is they want to know how to tell other people about Islam. Muslims are thirsting. For that, what do we do? What are the tools we need? What do we say? How can we do it? And you know, there, there are books, there are the DVDs and videos and all sorts of things that have been produced to tell Muslims how to call others to Islam. But as you say, you, you're quoting my, my introductory remarks, it starts from good Muslims giving good example. That's how it starts. You know, if people have bad image, Im, images of Islam... The bad images have come from two places. They've come from mischief makers creating nonsense and, and wanting to deceive and portray a wrong image of Islam. That's one place they're getting it from. But then as well, if truth be told, the only other image of Islam they're seeing is Muslims themselves. So we really, we really need to be very careful and, and fit those oxygen masks and live as good Muslims and then by giving, living as good Muslims, inshallah, people will then begin to learn about Islam. We don't need to give people lots of talks. You know, in your, in your office, in your mechanics workshop, at school, at university, your friends who maybe they're not Muslim, they, they don't want to be lectured to. They don't, you, you don't want to give them talks about Islam. You'll, you'll teach them more about Islam by, by the way you behave in the office. You know, do they see you as someone who's always on time? Do they see you as, you know, really hardworking at school? The best student in the class? Is that what they see? Is they, do, do they see you, you know, as a man or woman of prayer? They point to you and say, that person, you know, in my class, he's a Muslim. There's something special about that person, something different about him. He's honest, he's trustworthy. You know, he's reliable, he, he's a good friend. He, he's a good son. She's a good mother. All of those, is that what they're learning or are they learning something different? You know, are they saying, oh, well, you know, he actually he drinks that person. He's Muslim, but, you know, he goes to the disco on a Friday night. So we've got to be very careful what image we're giving. And before all the talking, before, you know, before all the books on, I've even got my own book about calling others to Islam. Even before the books and the videos and the DVDs, we need to sort out our own Islam. And, and when each one, you know, fits their oxygen mask and asks Allah to help them to be good Muslims, then we can tell people about Islam. Before we have another question, just tell us, Brother Omar, what you were telling me in the break about the, the brother who, whose example brought you to Egypt, because it's a very beautiful story. Right. Uh, well, um, I've been Muslim for uh, many years. I'm a Muslim convert. I've embraced Islam. Alhamdulillah. And I've been Muslim, praying five times a day for several years. Uh, but I wasn't really uh, that good, we'll say. I mean, I wasn't bad. I wasn't committing any major sins, drinking or anything like this. But, uh, you know, things weren't really... I wasn't sure which direction I needed to go in life. We'll put it that way. And what made me uh, make the decision to come to Egypt and study the religion of Islam and, and really dedicate my life to it was was not any any argument it was not an argument that somebody gave me that convinced me what it was was a scholar from al-azhar uh, 
was the sheikh of our masjid, the leader, the imam of our masjid. And he has a double PhD. I didn't know that at the time. But, you know, he has a PhD in Sharia, which is Islamic law. And he has a PhD in Dawah, right? But I never knew this. I never heard him give some eloquent argument that one day, ah, you know, an angel's flying through the air based on his words. Nothing like that. All it was, was every morning when I went to pray Fajr, the morning prayer at the mosque, he was there before anyone else reading Quran. That was it. And he just was so peaceful as he was sitting there. He had that look of tranquility on his face, which I didn't have. You know, I'm praying five times a day and all of this, and I did not have the, the tranquility that this man had. So I said, he has a relationship with this book that I, I'm missing. So I said, from now on, I'm his companion. Wherever he goes, I'm going. If he's eating dinner, I'm sitting beside him eating dinner. If he's reading Quran, I'm sitting beside him reading Quran. And over time, I realized that what it was, and it was a simple fact. When he wanted to talk to Allah, he made salah, he prayed. And when he wanted Allah to talk to him, he read Quran. And it was like he, that's how he had his conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I started doing this, mimicking him, and my iman which is faith to the non-Arabic speaking uh, people, my iman increased, mm. like it skyrocketed. Mm. And I made the decision to dedicate my life to this religion. And I moved here and I started learning Arabic. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. One man. Uh, and there's another it. thing as well. You know, earlier in the day you asked me, you said, how often do you travel, Brother Idris? Mm. You know, because I travel all over the place. Right. And, and I said to you, I tra roughly half of the year I'm traveling and half of the year I'm, I'm at home. And the half of the year at home is so important mm. because without that half a year to think and to rest and to pray and to recite Quran, maybe I'd have nothing to say for the other six months. Hmm. You know, we really need to, to waste time, waste time for Allah's sake. You know, waste time talking to ordinary people and be with ordinary people and waste time looking at beautiful, walking by the Nile. What could be more beautiful to feed your spirit? You know, so we need time to think and to pray and to reflect. Socrates, you know, the Greek philosopher said that the unexamined life is not worth living. We need time to think, why did I get up this morning? You know, why am I Muslim? Why do I want to be Muslim? Why do I want to tell others about Islam? Right. Anyway, let's give yeah, them a let's see bit more they, of a yeah. chance to speak. What they have. Yeah, go ahead, brother. In the light that Islam rejected any form of uh, proselytizing uh, and not to be confessed as uh, an Islamic uh, model of Dawah, so how can you reflect on the following saying? Deeds speak louder than words, and may a thousand of people be embraced with, with one's own behavior than thousands talking to a single individual. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely right, brother. Actions speak louder than words. Deeds speak louder than words. We can all talk. We're good at talking. We're very good at talking. You know, we could all stand on a box and give a speech. But it's more difficult to, to, to do what you're telling other people to do. You know, it's the case, isn't it? Sometimes we say to our kids, did you pray yet, Ahmed? You know, go off and pray. And maybe we haven't even prayed ourselves. It's easy to talk. So you're right, actions do speak louder than words. As Muslims, there are 1.3 billion Muslims in the world. You'd think, really, if we were living as Muslims, the world would get the picture. They'd get the message. I mean, the message of Islam is so simple. And, and it's right, maybe I'm a very simple man, but I say to myself, what is it that they don't get? <laughs> what is it that they don't understand? There is a God, and that God speaks to his creation. That's Islam. All the rest follows on from that. But because we complicate it so much and talk about other things first, people miss, miss what Islam is about. Islam speaks to the hearts of all, speaks to men and women's hearts, directly to their hearts. But because we're giving them something else, they're missing what's most important. Brother, I think you want to say something. Okay. What is the best rule uh, one can play to spread the message of Islam, the beautiful message of Islam, while he is living in the Arab countries? What can he do? while he's living in the Arab countries. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All the Muslim countries generally. Mm. In other words, you're saying, how can we call people in the West to Islam if we're not living in the West? That's, that's the, the gist of the question. Well, again, the answer, it's, it's just what we've been saying all along. You know, the people in the West look at 
the Muslim world. And again, let's be honest, what they see isn't always good. It isn't always good what they see. If they were to see us every day living as good Muslims, I really believe that the, that the mighty powers of the West would sit up and take note. They'd sit up and listen to us. They, they'd take us as equal partners in discussion. But unfortunately, brother, that isn't what they always see. And so they don't take us seriously. And they don't treat us as equal partners. There is, there's no dialogue. It's just a monologue. We're being told what to do. So in answer to your question, what, we do, what you do is you live as a good Muslim where you are. 1.3 billion Muslims living as good Muslims, they would sit up and say, wow, we want to be like that. You know, so that's the first thing. And it, really it's the most powerful thing. If we did nothing else but lived as good Muslims collectively, the world would see Islam for what it really is. So that's, but then there are many other things we can do. We can, we can be involved in channels like this, like you're doing. You don't live in the West, but here you are talking to the world. You're talking about Islam. You can get involved in the internet. Mm. There are many, many good internet sites. I mean, you, you get involved in the internet a lot. Lots of things to talk about Islam. Uh, we can write to people. We can, maybe more than anything else, apart from living as good Muslims, we can educate ourselves about Islam and tell other people what Islam is really like. These are, these are small steps. It doesn't mean great things. You are not going to change the world, and neither am I. But maybe we can change the people next to us in the building or the people at school or at university or in the workplace. And by doing that, we affect the whole world. Mm. I think also my, my story about the sheikh in the masjid kind of answers that. Mm. You know, if you really have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're really close to him and your heart is full of love for him, you know, then it will, it will have a natural effect on the people around you. I mean, it's just natural. I don't think it's, you wouldn't even have to try if you're a good Muslim. I mean, that's my, my take. Do we have a, another question? I have a question. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah. Uh, when we want to call to Islam in the West particularly, what are the uh, important or the main points in Islam that we can uh, focus on during the uh, invitation or calling process? Bismillah rahman rahim You see, even before answering that question, what we must do is we must use the language that they speak. You know, we can't use a language that they don't understand. Now, I don't mean Arabic. I mean, we can't... To, you see, Europe, one of the guests we had here on this show, we had Dr. Hisham Helia, and he was saying that Europe is a post-religious society. It's not religious anymore. You, people don't think about God very much. They certainly don't think about or, organized religion very much. So if we're going, talking to them in this model they're not going to listen to what we're saying. You know, we have to think outside the box. We have to think about the people we're talking to and care for the people we're talking to rather than think about what we want to talk about. You understand? They will listen to us if we're speaking to them in, the, in a language they understand. And we've said it before on this show, you know, if their only interest is football, well, we have to start with football. <laughs> That's where we begin. It's no good talking about... Islamic history, if they have no idea what we're talking about. Even God, you know, we're very blessed living in, in the land of Islam. We hear the Adan five times a day. We hear the name of Allah wherever we go. We hear Insha'Allah, Bismillah. We hear the, in the West often the name of God would never be mentioned from one week to the next. Mm -hmm. So we have to think very carefully about the people we're talking to. Establish a relationship with them first. Let them see that we're not these people who are so out of touch with life that we're no earthly use. <laughs> you know, that we're ordinary men and women, flesh and blood, with all the concerns that they have. We go out to work to put food on the table for our kids. You know, we enjoy watching football. We're ordinary people. Then let them see that this message of Islam has touched our hearts and that prayer is it's like the air we breathe to us. But starting with that, they wouldn't understand what we were saying. So we have to bear all that in mind first. And then we tell them, maybe a good way to start is the five pillars of Islam. The, the declaration of Shahada. I mean, just that in itself, we could talk for months to people about that. Not just mouthing words, but telling them. We said earlier on, you know, I bear witness 
that there is no created being worthy of worship other than the one God. That's what we believe as Muslims. Now that speaks to them because we're saying neither football nor shopping nor shoes nor a big house nor a car nor your job. None of those is worthy of worship. None of the, those is so important that we should center our whole life around it more than Allah alone. If we put it into that context, it makes sense. But if we just use religious language, they won't understand what we're saying. And then the same with the other pillars. So I would say, speak to people in the language they understand, and then be very simple, use very simple points, that Allah is, is about one God, speaking to the hearts of men and women, speaking to them personally, and then when they've heard that message, that one God has certain rights, and, and, and we are called to worship him and do as he wishes. He created us out of love, so he, he can expect certain things from us. But until we, we, we put it the right way first, we're putting the cart before the horse, and they won't know what we're talking about. Right. Well, uh, we're going to go to a quick break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching Let's Talk. life of the Muslim starts at death. If you wish to enhance your knowledge of the Islamic perspective on the hereafter, this life doesn't go on forever, but we do so little to prepare for it because most of us don't know what happens after this life ends. If you want to be amongst those who know, then join us every Saturday at 1930 GMT for the inevitable journey. Bismillah. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm your moderator, Omar Dunlap. And of course, we have with us Brother Idris Taufik. Uh, brother, would you like to introduce our guest? I would be delighted to introduce our guest. Our, our guest today is Sheikh Mohammed Salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and thank you for inviting me. You honor us, Sharafna. My pleasure. Sharafna. Manawa. Manawa. So you speak Arabic and I speak English. Then. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do, though, before, before we talk, is because this, this show, Let's Talk, we're trying as best we can to attract a new audience Great. to Hoda TV. Mm -hmm. We're trying to attract non-Muslims, we're trying to attract maybe Muslims who perhaps are not good Muslims as they might be. So we're, we're introducing things in a new way. Now, you're no stranger to Huda TV, but maybe some of our viewers won't know much about you for this particular show. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself before we, before we carry on, for the, new, for the newcomers? To you the got show. me in this one. This is the most difficult question. <laughs> uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can show Him guidance. Uh, in brief, um, uh, I was born and raised in, in Egypt. I studied in Al Azhar since I was six years old until I graduated. Uh, I've got several degrees um, uh, in pharmacology, in art. Uh, I'm a painter, by the way, uh, Islamic art, by the really? way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I have my own exhibitions. And um, uh, I uh, have a degree in um, uh, Islamic uh, law, Sharia, and uh, Islamic law, Islamic studies, and so on. And um, uh, I teach in several places. I taught in Al Azhar University and uh, London College in Sharia Academy. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> now, I tell you, I've learned something new about the art. I didn't know about that. Just tell it, because there are some people watching now, and that it's art. Islam and art? I thought art was forbidden. Um, well, if you're talking about art in general, that would not be the right term to say forbidden. Rather, you have to be specific. What kind of art? Um, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu. So he said, eat and drink. But there are certain food, certain drink which is prohibited. Mm. Uh, when I was young, I, um, I loved painting and drawing. So I, 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 I painted the best photo for my dad. 
then as I grow older and I recognize that it is not permissible to uh, imitate the images of the live creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humans or birds or whatever, I was in the beginning kind of sad because it was my hobby. And I actually studied that as well along with my other study. I used to go to two schools at the same time. I'm talking about full-time school, one in the morning and one in, in the evening full day. Mm. Um, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed me uh, with something which is much better. Yes, there is Islamic art. Uh, and there is uh, art which Islam approves as long as it is not painting, drawing, imitating the images of live creatures which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created because the hadith in this regard are very, very clear in the prohibition of uh, um, tasweer in, in a sense of making images of living creatures. Mm. So nature is one of the best and the most beautiful alternatives. Um, also uh, in poetry, not necessarily making images, but making um, other figures and things which are not related to humans or birds. You can do that as well. Mm. And I have found the best and the finest art, finest peak of art, as Picasso as will say that it is in the Arabic calligraphy. I studied all the different uh, Arabic calligraphy, so it's it's very very useful. Mm. By the way, I've seen uh, what is it in uh, in your library? The carving. Yeah, the very beautiful. Was it metal or? Uh, Basically, it's a wood carving, but I painted it so it seemed silver. like uh, it's yeah. uh, silver. Mashallah, it's yeah. very beautiful. You have to see it. Mashallah, inshallah, yeah. I will. Now, the reason I ask you that question, brother, is because you know, we're talking about calling to Islam, mm -hmm. especially calling to Islam in the West. And as we were just saying with the audience, it's a very different situation. Europe has even been described as a post-religious society. You know, they've, they don't talk about God at all. So how, how then, from this background of art and so on, how do we present to people with no notion of God, with no notion of organized religion, who have this notion that Islam is somehow against anything that's fun, it's against anything that's, that's human and natural. How do we present this Islam to ordinary people in the street in Paris and in Rome and in Dublin? How do we present them as, as Islam is not just a, a bunch of rules to lay on their shoulders, but something that really touches their hearts? What do we do? Uh, yes, indeed, number one, Islam is a group of rules. Uh, but those rules do not restrict nor limit the life to... Um, like it, it would not make you live in, in a prison. There is fun. There is halal fun. When we examine all the prohibitions with regards to uh, any kind of activity, from eating, drinking, dressing, and uh, uh, work, or earning, or business transaction, we'll find them very, very limited compared to the lawful, which is very, very vast. Mm. But it is a human nature that whatever is restricted is desired. Mm. Whatever is restricted. I, I just give you an example. Yes, it is not permissible to make images of humans or birds, but there are tons of other things which I, I was able to fulfill my desire mm. uh, and hobby uh, and excel in this field in making things which are uh, lawful. Mm. So, uh, for instance, in, in, in the States, people always thought, as you just said, that Islam is, is a religion which would make uh, its followers feel like uh, in, in, in prison. So when we have an open house, when we have our own activities, when we go fishing, when we go hunting, when we go uh, camping and uh, canoeing and all of that, that's permissible. Mm. All of that is permissible. Mm. The only difference is when we're having an, outfield, an outdoor camping or whatever, we don't drink. Mm. We don't have uh, free mixing, men and women. We have separate entities. So we're having fun, but in a lawful way. Mm. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said once uh, concerning one of the celebrations, because we have two major aids, he said, حَتَّى يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِي دِينِنَا فُسْحَةً or farha. Let them know that our religion is also about fun, mm. experiencing joy and delight. Mm. I want to tell you one thing. Uh, once I had uh, Yusuf Islam, uh, Kat Stephen, mm. I invited him over um, where both of us presented a beautiful lecture um, in, in America, in Texas, at one of the universities. And somebody asked him, how do you find yourself after you were an, a star, an icon in the, in the sky of uh, music and so on? Mm. How were you able to quit doing all of that? So he said, I have found the best music in my life is listening to the Quran. Mm. 
Mm. Obviously, I'm not going to tell somebody who is not a Muslim or a Muslim but is not a practicing Muslim, you know what, the fun and the joy and the light is to listen to the Quran or recite the Quran because he is not there yet. Mm. But I can tell you that, yes, to me and to those who are living in this mood, I swear to Allah in, who, in whose hand is my soul that the best joy and delight is when you line up your feet before Allah at night to pray the night prayer. Mm. So this is a different stage. But for ordinary people, in order to show them that um, uh, Islam is not against uh, enjoying your life, that show and present how you enjoy your life in a halal way, mm. in a halal fashion. Mm. So every time we have, for instance, um, a picnic or whatever, we do everything that people do, except for the fact that if we are having sisters that wear in their proper hijab, mm. we don't have this kind of music, we don't have drinking. Mm. These are the things which once they're eliminated, then the whole thing is lawful mm. and halal. Mm. You see, I would challenge anyone watching to look, go to look at my website, because on my website there are lots of photos of Muslims all over the world, many, many countries. And they will see in all of the photos, everyone is smiling. And I insist for anyone who's going to be on my website to be speaking about Islam, that they present an image of Islam that is happy and smiling and not miserable. We have enough miserable people in this world without sure. adding to them more. So what's the very essence of Islam then, brother, that we tell people about that know nothing about Islam? How can we begin? What do we tell them is the most important thing? Let me pick it up from there. You just said about people smiling. This is an Islamic etiquette, an Islamic uh, instruction. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam considered this kind of smile is an act of charity. Mm. This is an act of worship. Mm. Whereupon if you smile, you receive a reward for that. Mm. Even if you're pretending that in, in fact that you're full of sorrow or you're having so much worries, but you're smiling to make people happy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa. Whenever you smile upon meeting your brother, this is an act of charity. Mm. So this is one thing. Mm. I always say and I repeat that the best form of giving da'wah is through being a role model, through being an example. Mm. Is not by giving lectures. Is not by presenting a speech and convincing people that or debates. Mm. No, the best way if you're working somewhere. I still remember my very first few days in the states where there was not a single Muslim in the area where I was living at, and uh, one time we're having a meeting with my colleagues and co-workers, and one of them said, "Muhammad, you missed your prayer. It was 15 minutes past Asr time, and I was shocked." I said, how did you know? I thought those guys have no idea whatsoever about Islam, but living with them for mm. uh, from one week to ten days. Mm. They have observed closely mm. that certain times I withdraw and I have my own prayer rug and I have mm. a campus mm. where I know what is the direction of the Qibla mm. and I start my prayer. So I asked her, how do you know that I'm supposed to be praying right now? Mm. She said, we know things. Mm. We're monitoring you. Mm. So this is one thing which impressed them that you're committed mm. and when once the meeting took a little longer 15 minutes past the time she looked in her watch and said she said that so people are keeping an, they, they keep an eye on you mm. if you're different mm. not necessarily if you're Muslim if you're anything that is different mm. so whenever you are you're being yourself a good Muslim mm. as the Prophet Sallallahu yeah, Alaihi Wasallam said so this is the core of his message mm. in one hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ I have been sent exclusively to perfect good manners. Mm. This is the main mission, of course, obviously, along with the Tawheed, mm. which is worshiping Allah alone, mm. recognizing His unity of worship mm. and Lordship, etc., mm. to be well-mannered. Mm. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that on the Day of Judgment, the best of mankind and the closest to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in heaven will be of uh, those who had the best manners mm. in this life. Mm. So if you're like that, mm. you're a da'iyah, mm. without saying a word. Mm. When there is a little mistake in the receipt, and that happened repeatedly, 
once I purchased something, I guess it was Office Depot, Office Max, one of those office supplies, and I re returned it. So they gave me, they refunded the money in cash. Then a month later, they sent me a check with the same amount. So now they paid me twice. And I talked to the store and I said, I don't know what is this for. She said, it's your name on it. So it's, it belongs to you. I said, but uh, I don't know what is it for. Mm. She tried to remind me and finally we figured out that's an item which I purchased and in return and I got a full refund for it. I said, well, I cannot take this. Mm. She said, well, it's yours. Have fun. You can take it. Mm. I said, is this what you think? I can't. Mm. I'm not trying to pretend, but this is a fact. Mm. Uh, a lawful earning is not about stealing or just breaking some into somebody's house. Mm. There are so many things which are prohibited, such as if you find something which does not belong to you, you cannot just pick it up, stuff it in your pocket and say, this is mine, I found it. Mm. No. There is an Islamic uh, rule in this mm. regard, even mm. lost and found, mm. depending on its value. Mm. So I say, I can't. Automatically, those people will ask you, why? Mm. Here you have an opportunity mm. to explain. Mm. I can take it because it mm. is unlawful. Mm. One, two, three. Mm. My religion taught me this and this and this and that. Everything, everything, everything that you do, somebody mm. will ask you about certain behavior mm. which is unique to them mm. or strange mm. or they are not familiar with. And once you have an opportunity to explain, you present your da'wah short and in brief. Mm. Mm. You see, not too long ago I was in... Um, the National University of Ireland in Galway, in Western West Ireland. And present at the same event was the Roman Catholic chaplain to the university. Hmm. He honored us by coming. We were talking about Islam, and he came to show his friendship and his support to the Muslim students. Hmm. And at the end, he got up. He said, I'd just like to say something. They were all Muslims. He said, I just want you to know as students how much we, the staff at the university, and the other students in the university are impressed by you. And they were astonished, really. And it was wonderful to hear it. Mm. He said, you know, we expect great things of you as Muslims. Mm. We expect you to behave in a certain way. And we expect you to, to speak in a certain way. And this is very, very important. Mm. Well, you just reminded me, um, this is, um, you know, we say uh, every action has a reaction. Have the same power in the opposite direction. Once I was invited to a debate with the president of uh, a very prestigious university in, uh, in Texas. And instead of having a debate, I just uh, thought it would be best if, if I just present mm. Islam mm. in a simple form mm. without entering into a debate. Mm. Because 99% of the audience are uh, non-Muslims. Mm. They're students, mm. professors, and the president himself is sitting next to me on the podium. Mm. So what happened, I was, uh, I, I was just trying to present Islam without challenging uh, this person. Mm. Until one of the students asked me a question during the Q&A session. And the question was that why Muslims are killing Jews? And you know, when it comes to this kind of question, you really feel like, you know, those guys don't understand anything. Mm. They are being captives of certain kind of media. Mm. They are not educated, even though they are other professors or students or or. or. Mm. Before I utter an answer, Omar, the president of the university said, would you allow me to answer this question? I said, please, proceed on. So he said, as a matter of fact, the question should be rephrased and presented as follows. Why do Jews kill Muslims? <laughs> Why the Jews are killing Muslims, not the other way around? So he relieved me and he started explaining. Mm. I guess this kind of uh, reaction from him was developed innocently as a result of my treatment to him, mm. of respecting mm. him, mm. not criticizing him. Mm. I have delivered my message. Mm. And basically, this is what the Quran teaches us. Mm. Every message that the Prophet ﷺ used to send so. to a king or a ruler, or, or he would honor him. For instance, to the Roman emperor, he would say, this is a letter from Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, to Herak Hercules. Mm. Mm. the greatest man of the Romans. Mm. Give him his position. Mm. Mm. Then deliver the message. Not in a challenging way, mm. but in a beautiful way. Mm. The third stage, which is argument, is only with those who are argumentative, mm. but also with one which is best. Mm. So the Quran said, 
قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون This is our message especially to the people of the scripture whether Jews or Christians The Quran says say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and similarly all his followers تعالوا all of us come to كلمة سواء a straight and just statement which is لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and not to take one another as duties instead of Allah or along with Allah or besides Allah mm. what if they turn away then say bear witness that we are Muslims فإن تولى فقولوا شهدوا بأن مسلمون this is the mission and the role of every Muslim by the way uh, sometimes uh, people like to uh, to say he's uh, a religious man or he's a da'iya or 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 and this question I was asked once in, in one of the lectures which I was presenting to a group of our men and women where an officer asked me whether in Islam do we also have missionaries I said he said uh, actually it was she she said do you guys have missionaries like in Christianity I said well unlike any other religion that every Muslim is born to be a missionary mm. has a mission which is to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same uh, format which was just mentioned earlier bil hikmati wal mawidati al hasan with wise words and beautiful preaching exactly. right we're going to go to a quick break but i have to accent this point with a story uh, you know i actually uh, coming from a christian background i studied the bible a lot and maybe when i was first becoming muslim i was very maybe overzealous and i actually had a, a debate in a church with a church of christ preacher in a church of christ uh, and as in the course of the debate, two young ladies actually came and took shahada. Mm. Now I'm asking, if you're the preacher, how would you feel? You maybe would be angry with me, and you know, especially I'm spending this time refu refuting your points. And stuff. But I'll tell you something. When I left America to come here, you will see him in the masjid wearing a kufi, growing his beard, the wearing preacher. jalabaya. Oh, yes. great. And he's very close to taking shahada, not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And I asked him why, and he said, well, I need to know more about the Prophet. I don't feel comfortable Fair enough. taking shahada until I love him, you know, mm -hmm. which, alhamdulillah, this is actually wise, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is, why? It was not because I was refuting his arguments, but because at the end of the debate, I took 10 minutes to praise him. I told the, the whole audience, this man is an honest man. I've never once made an argument to him where he said, no. And it was clear that I was right or anything like that. He was very, he's a very honest person. He's a very good person. And if you go to his house, you'll see he's very righteous. He doesn't even own a television. You know, this sort of thing. He's very religious. And I just kept, you know, like this, like this. And he later told a friend that this softened his heart to Islam. But nevertheless, Omar and uh, uh, Brother Tawfiq, we have to be very careful. Praising doesn't extend to praising the, th uh, the, 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 religion, the ideology yeah, the or approving the thinking, them because right, right. have to be very distinguished. This right. is what I believe and this right. is what you guys believe. And I believe this is the truth. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're going to go to a quick break and we'll be right back in Thank you so, so much. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Let's Talk. So this is an open invitation for everybody to recognize God and enjoy His blessings in this life and His mercy in this life and in the hereafter as well. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Each name has a meaning. Each name signifies a nature of Allah the Almighty which no one shares or is compared to Allah in it. Bismillah. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm your moderator, Omar Dunlap. And we have with us, of course, Brother Idris Taufik and our very wonderful guest, uh, Sheikh mm -hmm. Mohammed Salah. Uh, I think we're going to give the audience a, a chance to ask you a question. Do we have a, a question? Just Go. make it an easy question, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, brother. Uh, what's the most uh, important rule a Muslim can play to uh, help people to enter Islam? 
Okay, yeah. I guess you're talking about uh, the, the role that Muslims can play in order to uh, impress non-Muslims and make them really attracted to Islam. I would uh, be uh, happy to uh, answer this question by repeating what I said. Uh, being a role model uh, through your actions, your behavior. Uh, in another word, I would say uh, talk less and act much. Act modest. Mm. Act truthfulness. Mm. Um, uh, respect others. Mm. Adopt the moral system of Islam. Mm. Then once you are asked, you can talk. Talk very loud. That's my advice. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, Brother Dries, we're going to go to our emails now. We have one from uh, Sister Alina in Malaysia. And she says, uh, Brother Dries, I have seen from your Facebook group that you often give talks about Jesus and Islam. And sometimes these talks are given to non-Muslims. And she's curious, how do non-Muslims react? Are they offended? And, and so on. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In fact, that, that question answers, uh, follows on perfectly from what we've been talking about. Recently, I was at Cambridge University talking about, uh, in fact, I was talking about Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Be upon and I began the talk because they were half Muslim, half non-Muslim, I began the talk by saying, if anyone has come here today to play games, or to score points, mm. you know, or, or, or to belittle anyone's beliefs, you've won already. <laughs> you know, I'm not into playing games. If you want to play a game, okay, I give up, you've won the game. Let's not waste time. Mm. I've just come here to tell you very clearly what Islam teaches. There's nothing to debate about. What would we debate? This is what Muslims believe. There's nothing to discuss. Right. I'm going to tell you in a very simple, clear way. And I've learned, brother, that you can say anything to people as long as you say it in a very nice way. Mm. If you say it in a respectful way, as, as, we, as we've heard, as long as you say to people, I respect you. What you believe, I consider to be wrong. I, I think that you believe the wrong thing. And what you believe isn't going to lead you to, to paradise. But the fact that you believe it, I respect you. Mm. And, and I found in talking about Jesus, alayhi salam, and explaining what Muslims believe about Jesus, alayhi salam, non-Muslims are prepared to sit and listen. And, and at the end they say, thank you for explaining that to us. We didn't know that before. Mm. Mm. So it, it follows on very perfectly. In, dealing, in, in all things, good manners, good behavior, respectful, polite, well behaved, well well presented, so that people see in us the Islam that we're talking about. That's right. Well, unfortunately, I, I wish we had a two-hour show, but that's uh, all the time we have for us today. So we hope to see you next time, inshallah. Until then, I I'm your moderator, Omar Dunlap, wishing you peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will. When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you're trudging seems all uphill When the funds are low and the debts are high And you want to smile but you have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must but do not ever quit Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt Success is a failure turned inside out Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt